Do you want to learn Geospatial Python in 2024? Well, look no further, because that's what we're gonna do today with ChatGPT. I shared a poll a few weeks ago on LinkedIn asking what would be the most useful video for you to use. And this was the number one response using GPT and generative AI to learn Geospatial Python. Now we're gonna be doing this a few ways. We're gonna be using the base 3.5 GPT model, as well as a combination with GPT and BARD. Next we'll move into using some of the more advanced models with uh, GPT-4, the premium version. And then finally looking at a custom GPT that I developed using some of my old materials to actually learn not just geospatial Python, but everything together. So let's jump in. So I've seen a number of these tutorials, and the first thing you generally want to do when learning geospatial Python is first get yourself an outline. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and ask ChatGPT, how can I learn geospatial Python? Please provide me a learning template and plan. So it gave us some basic information on things to actually check out and use, but not really so much of a learning plan. So let's try it again. So I gave it another prompt here to actually tell me how to do this step by step and exactly what things to do and when. And this looks a little bit better. Uh, it kind of gives you some of the things you need to do, some of the libraries and stuff like that. But I'm still not totally satisfied with this. And there's one big glaring error here. What if you don't know what any of these things are or haven't done Python at all? I give this outline like a solid B. It's not great, but it's not enough detail for us to actually learn anything as well. But there's one glaring error. What if you know nothing about Python or programming at all? So let's rewind this a little bit and start to actually provide this chat with a little more context information. So I'm gonna start a new chat and actually start over. The key here is using correct prompts and now the number one thing that you need to do to actually use this tool effectively is use really detailed prompting and really tell it what you want to know. So I really wouldn't start out with a generic question like we did before, I'd throw all of that away and start over. So let's just begin from the very beginning. So what I'm doing here is I'm giving ChatGPT a few different things. First, I'm telling it who it is or the voice that they should be using, who the audience is and the skills that they need to learn and what skills they already do know or don't know in this case, and then exactly what they want to learn. Here's some of the things that I want to be able to do and structure with that. Uh, finally, I put in a few things that I want them to be able to do, which is different projects or different components like that. And then finally, uh, build this all into a lesson plan and the ultimate goal that they should be able to do when this is all done. So let's go ahead and see what this comes back with. So this looks a lot better. I can see here that it gives you the step by step that we need to go through about learning basics of Python, some different scripting. So I have to say this looks like a hundred times better. I'm really happy with what this got back. Um, it gives you all the things from learning basic Python, uh, what is geospatial analysis in Python, spatial thinking, spatial data types. This is really detailed and tells you exactly step by step what you need to do. So what we can do here now is actually take one of these steps and actually have it build out some different lessons for us. So what I would do is actually save this in a document and then uh, start to build this out. But let's just start with one here is the basics of programming. So you don't need to really tell it this right now, but you can actually hit that quote button and it will share this core component. Please create a guided lesson for this section with examples and code. And what I really like about this is you can just grab those different chunks and then ask it to do that. Plus when it's all in one chat, it remembers everything that you already put in there. So it's really easy to just kind of grab what you wanna do and go from there. And here's what you can do is you can see these different components and actually understand what it might want you to do. It gives you data exploration, some of these different pieces, everything here. So this gives you the actual activities of what you wanna do. And then as you go through here, you can actually say, okay, explain this section to me. So let's go to section 1.1. So let's go ahead here and grab, so let's grab activity 1.1 and say, please provide the detailed lesson for the students to learn this section. And then as you can see here, you're just breaking down the problem into individual steps. And what you'll see here is that it gives you some basic components here, the importance of programming, some of these different pieces, here's some activities and what you wanna do. So this is your best way to get started with the GPT 3.5 model. It's pretty basic, but it gives you enough of what you need to know, but it's a good place to start and go through there. Now, if this is still a little bit difficult, the thing I always like to do is explain it to me like I'm a five-year-old. 
So let's just do that. And this will just break it down into really simple terms, right? You're telling it what to do, <laughs> what's important. I think it helps just to get a little bit of context. Sometimes the responses are pretty funny, but it's always good if you just don't understand something, go from there and check it out that way. So in the next section, I mentioned that you can actually use ChatGPT with Bard. And of course, ChatGPT doesn't have access to the internet. And Bard's actually done a lot of great work to really expand its use. It has some new Gemini models that are really getting close to what ChatGPT 3.5 can do. Plus it has the added advantage of being able to search the internet. So let's just grab this section here. We can copy this entire section for 1.1. And let's grab this, put it over here. So let's go ahead and ask Bard to actually provide us some resources on learning these different tools. And I can actually go out and just find these things on the internet that you wanna use. So all I'm doing here is asking it to provide me some different resources for learning this. So let's go ahead and see what Bard comes back with. So there's a few ways you can do this. I usually start with like the higher level uh, lesson plan that you have here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this section and I'm just gonna ask Bard to find me some resources on the internet to learn these different th concepts. So as you can see here, it's actually providing us some real resources that we can check out. It has some different blog posts, some videos, uh, different websites and coding tutorials that you can actually use to actually learn these different concepts, which this is really what I love is actually going back and forth between the two models. Since one has access to the internet, the other doesn't, it really gives you an easy way to do this completely for free. So this is my second tip is actually using Bard as your basic kind of portal to the internet to find some different resources, concepts, things like that, and just filter out so you don't have to do hours and hours of searching. So since Bard connects to the internet, you can actually ask it to go out and look for different resources on the internet, including different data sets that would be interesting for you to use. So let's do the same thing with this section four here and ask it to go out online and search for these different resources. So as you can see here, it's writing this response back and it's giving us some really good data sets. We have natural earth data, world cities data set, uh, tiger lines, open street map. Some of that's a little basic. If you're in geospatial, you probably know some of these things, but if you're learning this completely from new, um, this is a really nice resource to be able to go and find these things. And of course, since you can type anything in here, you can kind of craft your response. If you want to look at environmental data, if you want to look at cities data, if you want to look at, I don't know, business data, you can all go in here and find those different things. So now let's flip over to GPT-4. And what GPT-4 has, it's a premium version of chat GPT. You do have to pay for it, so do keep that in mind. But there's a few things that you can actually do, which is one, it will give you some more up-to-date responses, but it can also go out and search the internet for different things as well. So if there isn't a library that it scanned when it ran through the internet in GPT-4, I think that was around like April of 2023, uh, you can always ask it to search for something and learn a bit about that. So I've done those with uh, different libraries like LeafMap or LawnBoard that kind of came out or added new features since then you just kind of tell it to go out and learn those different tools. So let's go ahead and have it do that here. So what I'm gonna go is I'm gonna go to the lawn board website here. This is a really great tool for geospatial visualization, but it came out after ChatGPT4 was developed. So what you can do here is actually go to the documentation. So what I'm gonna do is ask it to go out to the lawn board documentation, actually go through and learn what's there and provide me some basic details about that. Now this will take a few minutes, it's actually gonna go and do some research with Bing and then it will check out and return some different results. So uh, I'll flip back when this comes back on and you'll see what the results are. So the first go around actually had a timeout error um, and then it's actually running this now. So it's giving us the details on the library, exactly what it is. It's synthesizing some of the basic information you see there. Um, and then it's gonna go through and actually tell us a little bit more about that. So this is what I really like for like new concepts or things you don't understand is you can actually go through and have it read the documentation of the thing you want to know and get some more details about that. Now there's two other tips that I recommend. Since really learning code Code requires some practical actual use cases and actually doing these different things, you can actually use GPT to code and design some coding challenges for you. So let's go ahead and do that here. Now I like GPT-4 for the coding ability. One thing it has built in is actually Python built into it. So you can actually do some different things with that. We'll actually upload a data set and see what it returns in a minute. But right now it's gonna actually go through and walk through how to use this with Folium and provide us some different code tutorials as well. So usually it will give you kind of this overview to begin with like you see here. And then you can ask it to provide some code examples and it will actually write some code for you to test out and use with your current setup in Python. So what you can do here is it can actually share three different coding challenges for you and it will actually write those out and give them to you. You can ask for multiple or more. If you want more and it can't all fit in one response, just tell it to split it into two or more responses and it'll actually do that for you, which is really nice. Um, so it's actually gonna give you the challenge here and show this. And then what you can do is try and build this out and then say, um, once this is finished, can you show me the code for 
number one. And it'll actually write that code out for you so you can kind of check your work. You can also do some things like fill in the blank activities or questions and answers and quizzes and things like that. Um, so what it can do is you can actually give um, some different tips here. So you can actually see it's going to showcase what this looks like here and actually uh, give you the code to do this. Now, another way to do this is ask it to give you a code scaffold, which is basically like some of the structure of the code you want to use, but not with all the tips in there. So it'll actually kind of give you some of these different pieces together and ask you to do them. You can ask it to exclude some pieces or fill in the blanks and then you can actually ask it to return the answer for you as well so you have both of these different approaches to really solving this problem the last thing i like to use gpt for is for actually constructing a project so let's ask it to construct a project with the skills we just learned so what i'm going to do is ask it to build a complete kind of portfolio project idea so it's giving interactive map of global air quality it's going to tell you some of the data sets you need and all these different tools you can use so at each step you can kind of design your own project actually go out and retrieve the data and build this whole thing for yourself so this is like really great that you can kind of do these bits step by step. It's always tricky knowing what to do, but like I said, we started with this really kind of concrete formula of the different steps you need to learn. You break those down into individual pieces and then you break those down further. And then within those pieces, you actually have to execute the coding for you. Now what's great is like I said, you can actually go in and use it as like a tutor to ask these different questions, ask it to explain it to you differently and really go from there. So it's a really amazing way to do all these things together. Okay, so the last one we're gonna talk about today is actually using a custom GPT that I built. And, and this is something you can do with the premium version of chat GPT is you can actually kind of program your own GPTs as it were. So I've seen a few of these for different things like writing or productivity or um, even workouts and stuff like that. But this one is uh, actually taking uh, prompts that you provided. So it's kind of like you're coding it with your own words, as you can see here. Um, the other thing that's really great is you can actually put in some information or documents on your own. For example, I pulled the text off of all my blogs, my website. I'm uploading some different stuff from some of these scripts that actually say, here's how I would recommend doing things, or here's how I would do that. So so I'm still working on programming this. If you have the premium version of ChatGPT, you can check this out. But there's a few different things you can do. There's some pre-built in prompts that you can do here. So let's say, how do you want to learn Spatial SQL in this case? Um, it'll actually give you some roadmaps and guides on how to do this, um, basically using some things that I put out there. So it kind of is programmed with some knowledge. I'm working on bringing in other pieces, like I said, but it gives you a few different ways to actually do this. So it's a little way more focused on what you actually want to do. So also kind of give you this approach and then you can kind of do some different pieces with that. So if we go back and create a new uh, path here, this is how you get started with Geospatial Python. Uh, this will actually tell you how to do that and some recommended approaches. So some things that I like to do is setting up my environment with Docker. I always wanna make sure I'm using that, putting all those pieces together, uh, do different things like actually giving you the code to run that. So it's it's very prompted to do very specific things. Um, so that's kind of why I like this. And um, as it goes along, I wanna build in more tutorials, but I've given it that recommended approach and kind of will continue to tune this and give it that approach. But the great thing is I can give it my knowledge plus all the other knowledge that ChatGPT already has. So go check this out if you haven't. Um, I really enjoy it, uh, building it, and I'm gonna continue to build it over time because I think it's just one of those cool tools that allows you to do a lot more different things like this. So then really great thing is I've kind of allowed it to do more advanced questioning. So let's just ask it a question about network analysis. Now, as you can see here, I'm asking it how to do network analysis in Python. So I still recommend using a very scripted prompting, telling it very much exactly what you want to do. Um, it allows you to uh, pull the different recommendations that I put into it, but ultimately you can get the specific code you want. It uses things like Network X and OSMNX that it might be take you a few different prompts or things to dive into to actually get to that. Um, so that's kind of why I wanted to build something more specific for folks watching this to check this out. So that's the video for today. Uh, stay tuned. I'm going to release a really full tutorial on doing geospatial or modern GIS with uh, Python. So that's it for today. I'm working on a full video, uh, something like a a longer course that actually allows you to go deeper into these topics, not just for Python, but different things around modern GIS and stuff like that. So it gives you really deep dives on how to do this for yourself. Um, I'll be publishing that here uh, in the coming weeks. So uh, keep a look around and uh, hope to see you around next time.